Hey, welcome back, options traders. Well, what is risk modality? It's a really good question. It's one that I talk to traders a lot about, and it really catches traders off guard because if you ask most traders, they all feel that the strategy, let's say if it has positive delta, that it always has positive delta. Or one of my favorites is, oh, I only do credit spreads so that I have positive theta. Well, does that credit spread always have positive theta? And they seem to forget that these risks can change with time, volatility, and most of all, the stock's price. And so these changes are what we call risk modalities. So kind of a fancy word, but just think of what it means to be talking about a specific mode. We're just talking about a designated condition or a status of something. And that's what we're looking at with risk modalities. As that stock price changes, how are the risks of these strategies changing? So for this video, we're just primarily talking about the definition so that you have a better understanding of risk modality. Let's dive in a little deeper. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So risk modalities. So just remember that option strategies can change your Greeks, delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho, as stock, time, and volatility change. Very rarely do things stay constant. Now, as a general rule, your strikes closest to the current stock price tend to dominate. And that's why, for instance, if you have a vertical spread, you've got a long and a short strike. And that's why these risks are going to change as that stock price changes. So the main thing that risk modalities show is that risk is not equally distributed across stock prices, even for a single option position. But they get more complex, as you're going to see, when we start talking about spreads. Now, some traders prefer to talk about or think about risk modalities as the number of sign changes. In other words, if we have positive delta and we sometime later switch to negative delta, that is one sign change. We have two signs, positive and negative, but we've only changed once. So that's just another way of thinking about risk modalities. And it'll be a lot more clear as we go through some examples. So let's start off with a simple one, just a long call. So here's a risk graph that we're all familiar with now, kind of our hockey stick shape. That's the expiration graph. We get a bend right there at 100. So we can tell this is the 100 strike call. But prior to expiration, this profit and loss diagram doesn't look like this. This is only at expiration, this black line. Prior to expiration, let's say with 30 days to go, we're on this blue line. And so we can see that this is the profit or loss as the stock price changes. But we've talked about gamma in previous videos before. So this looks a little bit like a smile, kind of curving upwards towards the top of the graph. That's an indication of positive gamma. And that just simply means that as the stock price rises, we are adding deltas to the position. Of course, you can only get to a point where you can only add up to one. The biggest delta you can have is one, which means the gamma is zero. You can no longer add any more deltas. But prior to that, we've got some curvature. We have gamma, and it looks like it's always positive. We can start way out here. If we go way out far to the left, we would be at zero, and we gradually increase. At no point do we ever decrease our deltas. So that's positive gamma. Now, if we were to do a gamma graph, and a lot of your broker's platforms will do this, such as Thinkorswim, it would look like this. So what we're looking at here are various stock prices again, but instead of looking at the profit or loss of the long call, we're looking at the calls gamma. So what it's showing us is that here's zero. So you can see that we're always above zero. We're always positive. But sometimes we're more positive than others. So when the stock is way out here, let's say at 80, we don't have a lot of gamma, pretty close to zero. As the stock price starts to rise, now we start getting into some gamma. Stock's at about 90. Looks like we have about a two gamma. We're going to pick up two deltas on that next dollar move. So as the stock rises from 90 to 91, our deltas will pick up two. So you can see that as we continue to move towards the strike of 100, we are picking up or accelerating our deltas. 
That's positive gamma. And then once we hit the strike, that's where we peak. So it looks like our peak in this example is about six. We're going to pick up a maximum of six deltas if the stock is at 100. But watch what happens as the stock price continues to rise. See, we're still positive gamma because this blue line is above zero, but we're starting to fall. The rate of which we're adding those deltas is dropping and will continue to drop until we get way out here, in which case we hit gamma of zero. We ultimately have to, again, hit gamma of zero, otherwise our deltas would exceed one. But the point that I want you to see right here is we have only one sign. We have, it's positive. It never changes from positive to negative. So if you only have one sign or no sign changes, then that's a way of telling us that we have one modality. Think of it as pictorially as just this hump. We have, looks like a bell curve. And if there's only one hump, zero sign changes, that's one modality. Now, most of you know that for long positions, gamma and vega are going to be joined at the hip, unless we have a time spread. But for the most part, if you're positive gamma, you're going to be positive vega. But our theta graph is going to be inverted. Again, something that a lot of traders overlook. They're all focused on positive theta, not realizing that they have negative gamma and negative vega. So if you have positive gamma on your long call, or long put for that matter, which you do, what does your theta look like? Your theta curve looks like this. So now we have just one kind of hump or one bell curve, and that is one modality. We could also say that we have no sign changes. It's always negative. And that's important to understand. So you can already see it's starting to get a little complicated with just a single position. But watch what happens if we go to, let's say, a vertical spread. Now, the vertical spread at expiration looks like this in black. Prior to expiration, here's our current curve. Now, notice if we have some significant time to expiration, that curve is relatively straight. And that leads a lot of traders to think that all of your Greeks must be kind of similar or constant, because it's a straight line. But they overlook that things change. As time passes, this blue line is going to, let's say, move towards the red. Now we can start to see that we're getting two modalities. I've got positive gamma over here, this upward-facing smile. But in this region, it looks like a, more like a frown facing downwards. That's negative gamma. So if we were to look at a vertical spread, this is the 100-105 vertical spread, but we put it in some software or a broker's platform that will allow us to graph gamma, this is the way it would look. So now we read this in exactly the same way. As the stock price rises, what is your gamma? Well, for stock prices down here around 80, looks like it's about a quarter. As the stock price rises, my gamma is going to pick up to maybe one and a quarter, somewhere in here, and that's where it's going to peak. And then it's going to start trailing off, even though it's still positive. So as that stock is moving towards that short strike, we're starting to lose some gamma. Now notice that if we go from positive gamma to negative gamma, we have to at some point cross through zero. At some point we have to have no gamma, and that looks like it occurs roughly at 102 and a half. And so as that stock continues to rise, what happens? Now we're into negative gamma. Now we're going to increase our deltas, but at a decreasing rate. Now gamma becomes negative, and that might mean that we are eventually going into negative deltas, or maybe it just means that we are subtracting off deltas and heading towards zero, which is what's happening here with the vertical spread. So I'm going to hit my maximum negative gamma, Looks like around stock price of 112 will be at minus 1. And then we will start to pick up the gamma, even though it's still negative, And then we will eventually hit 0. So how many modalities do we have here? Well, if we just kind of count the, the humps here, we have 1 and we have 2. We have two main regions where things are going to change significantly. We could also go back to our sign change definition. I have positive gamma here, that's one sign, 
and then I switch to negative. That's one sign change. I've gone from positive to negative. One sign change tells me that I have two modalities. Now, just as with a single option position, if this is your gamma curve, your vega curve is going to look very similar. It's going to be positive on the lower half of the graph and negative up here. But your theta curve is going to be inverted. Over here, notice we have the left half is above zero and the right is below zero. The theta curve is going to flip. It's going to do this for that vertical spread. So now, read the graph exactly the same way. As the stock price rises, moves along this axis, you can see what your theta is. Over here, you've got negative theta when the stock is near your long strike. But as you move towards the short strike, you end up with positive theta. So we have one modality here and two here. Or we could count the sign changes. You have negative and then you flip over to positive. That's one time that you change. And so therefore there are two modalities. But this clearly shows that no matter what type of vertical spread you have, whether it's a debit or a credit, some areas will be negative theta and some will be positive theta. So for all you traders out there who like to trade credit spreads because you have positive theta, that's only partly true. It depends on where the stock is. If the stock always stays down in this region, you have negative theta. So I could enter a debit spread, let's say the 100-105, with the stock at 105, and I would have positive theta even though it's a debit spread because I'm operating in this second modality. All right, let's try a last one here. Let's look at a butterfly spread. At expiration, we're here in black. Prior to expiration, this is our current curve right here. Now we can see three things, kind of three key regions. I've got positive gamma over here, kind of an upward smile. Then it turns to a frown, negative gamma. And then I go back to, it's kind of hard to see here, but that's a smile, kind of curving upwards towards the upward part of the chart. That's positive gamma, positive vega. So as time passes, this red line will move higher to the in the center here, towards the black line, and then lower out here in the wings. So if we were to plot this in terms of gamma, we would get this. So now it's showing us that as that stock price moves in this direction, I have positive gamma, here's zero, so I know that this line is above zero, I've got positive gamma, then I start to slip. Then I hit a point where I have zero gamma, briefly, and then I go into negative gamma. For all of these stock prices here, I hit a minimum value here at 105, looks like about minus one and a quarter. Then I start to pick up again, and then I hit zero, then I go into positive gamma, and then I start to trail off again until I ultimately have zero gamma. Now again, our vega curve would look very similar. As long as you have the same expirations, Gamma and vega will be joined at the hip, and they will be opposite of your theta. So how many modalities do we have here? Well, come through and kind of count these humps. There's one, there's two, and there's three. We have three modalities in a butterfly spread. And so we could also say how many sign changes do we have? Well, we start off with positive, then we change to negative, that's one change, and then we change to positive. So we have two sign changes and therefore three modalities. So if we were to look at theta, these will be inverted. Instead of these humps being in the positive area on the left and right and negative in the center, they're going to be flipped. So if we were to graph theta, this is what we get. So we can easily see here is one modality, here's a second, and here is a third. So this is meant to be more of just for definition so that you understand, and if you get nothing else out of it, understand that for any strategy, things change. And at a minimum, time is going to change. That's going to change your deltas, which will change your gammas and your thetas and your vegas as the stock price changes, as volatility changes. And you need to not only be aware that they change, but where. And that's where your modalities come into play. So just remember, with risk modalities, option strategies can change their Greeks as the stock, time, and volatility change. And you must understand how and where these risks will change. Otherwise, you won't understand where your profits or losses are coming from.
And if you don't understand where they're coming from, you're trading in the dark, and that's only going to lead to bad outcomes over time. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.